What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Trash Cast from the Team Trash. Hey, look at that. We're getting hosted by Pika. What's going on? I'm your host of the, the show, the thing that we're doing. SoCal Honey Badger joining me today is, uh, introduce yourself to the people. This is the one and only Toad Savage or Shrek. Right? There we go. Toad Shrek. We've seen him in the Beef Set League. He was here on the last episode. I don't know where the other clowns that said they was going to join us is at, but whatever. We'll just get started without them. How are you doing today, Mr. Savage? I'm doing pretty good. Wide and awake this morning. How are you doing, Badger? Not bad. Not bad. I'm hanging out uh, outside of some, uh, you know, some some technical difficulties. Technically, I fucked up, and this is our second take on the podcast, so technically, I'm doing all right. Deja vu. <laughs> right so the topic we were talking about going uh before we we started um was the big thing the big happen in this uh, af this that the see man this is we're gonna do like eight takes now we're gonna keep going the big happening this weekend evo 2021 world championships allegedly i mean they're kind of the only world championships we've got now you said you haven't caught any of evo have you no i actually did not uh, catch any of evo so what's going on in the evo universe so well there's a couple of things the first big controversy controversy is that uh i believe there was a player named turkey right uh he was uh he's a uh, got to top eight and got banned and kicked out disqualified for being under 18 i believe he's 15 or 16 around there and there's a lot of big hubbub blue about that uh, even sonic fox chiming in saying hey i won my first evolution at 15. one did not just compete but won an evo at 15. so it goes to show that age really doesn't matter like younger people can fucking smoke everybody so like but it shows a definite change in direction for evo it used to be anybody can show up who cares and now now we have this a guy kicked out of top eight who knows he could have won he could have won, got the top eight. we will never know. And that does kind of, in my opinion, kind of taint the tournament a little bit. What do you think? Well, that's, for one, really tragic. Because especially if he was doing really well, got all the way up to top eight, I feel like that's, I mean, even if there were rules, they weren't tightly enforced because obviously he got all the way up to top eight. Um, that's a clear robbery uh, to me. Um, but the other the, the other thing about that is um we have people like jro you know who's really good at the game and i think you're you're right there he probably could have won or at least got up to top three um i think that's con yeah that's very controversial especially when people know it's a video game it's it's just a video game because i'm assuming that you're that they're enforcing that's an adult event or is it the content of the game like is it because it's rated m or i think it has more to do with the with fact that? that there's prize pots involved so when you get paid out and you get money and we got to do tax info and there are child labor laws that are different around the world so i think it has more to do with the fact that like evo was street man it was from the streets it's from the hood. We were some gangster-ass motherfuckers living, living at large, playing video games for money. Um, it was not never, ever, like, corporate. It was never by the book. And so maybe Evo shouldn't have been allowing kids at the tournament, but fuck it. It was fun. And, you know, like, Sonic Fox won. Like, that's fucking great. You know, like, we, it's, it's awesome that that happened. Like, why, how else would we have known that there was this child... G or teenage genius in fighting games and i feel like the issue for me is that evolution if they want to call themselves the world champion championship right that means best in the world that means anybody in the world i can kick their ass and right now it doesn't matter who wins they can't say that they can kick anyone's ass because there was one ass that they didn't kick on their way to the top and that to me just kind of taints it taints the whole competition because when you think about it, it's like, are you really the best in the world? You didn't beat that guy. That guy wasn't even allowed to compete. That guy could have won. You know, it's like in wrestling where you have the dispute in the fucking championship. Oh, he won it. It's a disqualification. Like, you know, that kind of, that's what we've got right now. We have two people that will potentially have a claim to being, you know, 
in the talk for a world champion. The guy that wins and the guy that wasn't even allowed to compete but showed promise and potential that they could have won. Yeah, that I, I see what you're saying there. There's a missing missing keystone to one's championship. They will never know what it's like to fight that person or if that person can overcome and oversee their tactics and how they play the game. Um, and this makes me think about I, I thought something similar uh, in my time when I was playing uh, Mortal Kombat 11 earlier. You see people like Sonic Fox in here, Ninja Killa, um, you know, Tweety, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have people on the top rankings on the Xbox who only play on the Xbox, who would only play with an Xbox controller, and they don't go to these things. There's a player, um, if I'm not mistaken, his name is Adamantium, on top of the Xbox list, and I've never seen him at a tournament. And I'm talking about, like, thousands to um, a very low number of losses. But I will never see that dude in a tournament. And it bled me to the same question we're asking here. These people will never fight said person, so really your show for being a championship it's all like the it could have very well changed if we had that keystone in the process well when it comes to people like having good win loss records and making a claim to being the best in the world i don't know that they that like that xbox guy would be able to have that claim all fighting game tournaments this is like our culture our tournaments are open, open entry. If you think you're good shit, get in, okay? So nobody can make any claim against someone who wins a tournament because you could have joined and you didn't. So, like, shut up. Fair. Whereas with this kid, he did join, and he could have won, and he did really, really good, and they kicked him out, not for anything that he could have had any control over or by not playing and performing, you know, to the best of his abilities. And so that's where I think that that tainted record comes from. And it's just always going to be a black mark on this tournament, you know, forever and ever. This yeah. kid could be a fucking a flash in the pan, right? They could they could have gimmicked their way and random their way to the top and they never, ever see the top of a tournament again going forward. But, but that's in the future. Right now, until, the, until it proven otherwise... This kid has a claim that they could have won, and I think that that's a shame. It's a shame that it's just a claim and we never learned if they could have yeah. or couldn't. Okay, and I see what you're saying there. It's it's the claim of um, actually going and putting the effort into going to those tournaments and stuff formally, yeah. but for, for now, um, he's not banned, is he? Yeah. That would be even more tragic. Well, he, he's, he's banned, banned until he's 18. Uh, okay okay so yeah i they, mean i mean it's just that they cool. they decided at top eight to start enforcing that rule awesome awesome i mean i kind of cut them some slack but with the world being in still in the pandemic as of this recording probably don't have somebody on staff readily available to go and check everybody's age and id so i get it i get it but it is kind of fucked up to jack that kid at top eight that's pretty deep in a fucking tournament we're already like like, this is the end of the tournament. Like, he played the whole tournament till the end. Yeah, that's that's a massive uh, that's a massive mistake um, on multiple people's parts, in my opinion. That That is tragic. And I mean, if he, I mean, he deserved to be where he'd uh, be. Um, but transition transitioning with the top eight. Uh, on a similar subject, so I didn't catch Evo, but I did catch a controversial moment that I believe was said was in this season of Evo. Mm -hmm. um, this one guy was playing RoboCop. Uh, gosh, I can't uh, remember his user for the life of me. Uh, you but talking about he ended up Sunio? doing. Was was that Sunio? Uh, Probably because That's he the did RoboCop a that basic... got the top eight. Then it might have been Sunio. Uh, he did a combo and into the Cobra rifle, and when he enhanced it, the person broke out and immediately got up and got out of the match. Um, and Wait, people were complaining the about match? the breakaway once again, or out of the match. He broke away out of the shots. Uh, I got yeah. my words mixed oh, up Oh, and then got up and punished him? And got up and punished him, and people were complaining about the breakaway again. Um, yeah. 
which is a common issue. But um, I, I was just thinking, think well, that. Writing. Yeah, because I was about to say, well, he could have just not enhanced it when he knew he had two bars and stuff. And people were just complaining about the breakaway again. And I'm like, I wouldn't have enhanced that for right. life of me if I saw he had two bars. I think that um, rifle's overrated anyways. I don't use it in my RoboCop build. Yeah, you use the missile. I remember yeah. our former conversation about that. A lot of pushback. Yeah. Well, no, but like, I mean, so... People complaining about breakaway is just like I'm kind of over it at this point, man. Like it's in the game, dude. That's like complaining about blocking. Oh man, they just block and then punish me. It's like, dude, don't do the shit that's gonna get you killed. Every character has breakaway safe combos. Like every character, you may not get a whole lot of damage. Okay, maybe that's just your character's design. Your character was designed to not get a whole lot of damage. Breakaway safe. You know, like you yeah. like Scorpion, right? Scorpions bitch about this shit all the time. Oh, man, I can't do anything for any kind of damage that's breakaway safe. And I'm like, yeah, but you have options. You have options to keep it unbreakable. No, no Scorpion ever complains when they kill somebody and that person could not break out because they kept doing spear into combo into spear and kept it breakaway unbreakable. Mm -hmm. Right. Nobody ever no Scorpion ever complains when the breakaway system fucks over their opponent and they win. They just complain when their yeah. opponent outsmarted them, got the read and then blew their ass up. And I'm like, dude, everybody like breakaway is not new. It wasn't added to the fact. And I don't want them to remove or change breakaway because I think that that would be unfair. Because of the people that have practiced and trained and learned the game as it is. Those of us that got good should not be punished because you're bad and you fucking don't know how to hold back your combos. And so the question here um, relating to the big tournament here is um, will they continue to host games like this if people complain about minor things like that instead of learning the game? Um. Well, I mean, the thing is, Evo just has new games every year. Unless there's, like, a big yeah. patch or a big expansion or something that nether... Because Evo's been kind of corporate for a while. And so Mortal mm -hmm. Kombat 11, this was the swan song Evo for it. Uh, if Will it be back next year? <sighs> depends on what's out and depends on, like, the community and how popular MK11 is. Uh, basically, if NetherRealm puts out another game, that's going to be the Evo game. And MK11 could also be a main stage game because they've had MK and Injustice at the same Evo before. So though they're not against doing two NetherRealm games, but there has to be a lot of community support for MK11 to maintain that spotlight um, over newer games, you know, because you're pretty sure Strive will be there again. Uh, Street Fighter V will yeah. probably be there again. Tekken, unless there's a new Tekken, that will be there again. Like the question mark would be, you know, is MK11 going to be there? I don't think, and I don't think they ever take into consideration bugs, glitches, or balance issues. Um, so those of you that are kind of new to the FGC and the FGC culture, uh, we're we're different than other communities, other esports, uh, just other philosophies. We're very open. Like, we're kind of like the open source eSport. We're the Linux, the Linux of video gaming. Anybody can enter and things like that. Um, so, shit, I lost my train of thought. I, got, I went into a whole backwards thing <laughs> about <laughs> what our culture is. Oh, yes, our, our whole thing is that everything is, like, open and you can kind of, you know, um, use whatever is in the game. And that's why we call the tournament Evolution. Right, because the game evolves from where it was. So evolution doesn't sit there and look at mechanics or cheap shit and say, oh, well, this is cheap or this has this balance issue. Okay, if that were the case, Marvel versus Capcom wouldn't have been like the main event game for almost a decade. Um, that that's the thing is so they'll allow it. It Evo, a lot of people think Evo follows some kind of like and it may be different now that it's owned by Sony, but I mean I've met the people that have started Evo, like, it's not like there's some kind of fucking charter, like, of rule set and, and whatnot. It, it's really f by the seat of their pants. And yeah. for the most part, the games are chosen based on two criteria. Is there money behind that game or is there community behind that game? So, like, if there isn't money behind it, 
they'll still fo feature it. That's why they had Melee for so many years, because the Melee community was so big. And so they're like, there's no money. There's no, like, Nintendo sponsorship for playing this old game. But there's a lot of people that play it. And then, likewise, on the flip side, they had Smash Brothers Ultimate because that was the new Nintendo game. They could get sponsorships with Nintendo, co-promote, and all of that. Um, so those are the two ways that, that games get into the Evo lineup. And so Mortal Kombat 11, a lot of people are like, oh, MK11 can't get back into the Evo lineup. And I, I'm like, no, dude. I mean, if it's anything like it was before, and obviously it's not exactly like it was before because they don't allow fucking minors to compete anymore, I guess. But yeah. if the philosophy is still there and that community spirit, which was the big selling point when Sony bought out Evo, everybody got kind of scared and Sony said, no, we want to preserve the community spirit. We bought Evo because we respect the grassroots nature of what you guys are all about. So everybody's kind of like, all right, it's put up or shut up time. Would they support MK11 if there was enough community support? What do you think? I see, I see what you're saying. Um, it, you know, this is kind of a, it might be kind of out there to think about, but that just made me think, what if their community was a lot of younger people? There was a whole there was a whole bunch of money. This alternate scenario, obviously, there was a whole bunch of money in it, but all their communities were like barely eighteen, like you know, old enough to claim the prize pool and stuff. Would there be a way of them knowing that the demographic of a game that's still living with a large community of people who can't claim the money, but they make money off of it, would they still host that? That's, for those people yeah and that's that's the big question mark looks like uh soppiest cult is joining us you tardy motherfucker say hi to the people <laughs> he's having some technical difficulties he'll interrupt and start talking when he gets ready um yeah that's to me that's like the big question mark it's put up or shut up time for sony like you're gonna say that you're gonna support the community well then support the community you know what i mean when the community you know is is out in force if melty blood comes out and it does very very well are they gonna host melty blood knowing that melty blood is basically a fucking indie game made by a bunch of fans it's not even like there's no real like in-house set studio it's you know it's a bunch of guys that just love fighting games that make fucking melty blood and it's awesome so but they're not you know they have the backing of arc systems now but that's not always been the case and that may not always be the case and again that's that's for a newer game that's coming out what about mk11 if there's community support the community came out pretty strong for mk11 that's the other thing that's the other thing is that mk11 had a pretty big uh pretty big turnout right oh yeah the um there was a ton of people at the first year of evo like those pools were huge no i'm um, saying when i went the first year i'm saying this evo did you see the viewership for evo no i didn't what were the numbers on that so for Evo this year, I'm um, looking right now, I believe it was 20,000 concurrent. And that was for the whole event, like every game? Like well, you're just watching for, a multitude of games? Just for the peak. Okay, I got you. For all the, for the whole event. Yeah, the peak was 20,000. So yeah, would, that that to me... That to me tells me, thanks for the follows, guys. That to me tells me that um, that there is interest there. There is an audience. There is a community. I mean, I get a con consistent viewership, you know, from uh, with the game. So, you know, like, I can't say that the game is dying. Oh, I definitely don't think the game is dead. Um, it's kind of like the former we were talking about. There's too much in this game to discover, especially now since the developers had. Um, hey, a... all right. Yo, what's up, guys? I'm Isa. All right. Isa, also known as Sapius Cult, if you've been watching in the Twitch chat and on the xbox days uh we were talking about before our fucking shit fucked like talking about evolution and uh what, what do you think about evolution so far isa 
Uh, I'm not really like into Evo, but I think Mortal Kombat 11 is like fun, and it's definitely not dead. Well, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyways, what were you saying? Um, fucking fucking Toad. What were you saying when you cut off? Oh gosh. Uh, mm, that's a good one. All right. Well. Perhaps we might be we might be too uh, intoxicated to remember stuff. Let's move on. Let's move on. Next topic. To the next topic. So one thing that I wanted to discuss, we're kind of touching on it before with evolution and evolution going forward, is I kind of wanted to talk about what are your opinions and on the future of esports as a thing, as a, a concept. I think... Because I noticed that they were holding pre-qualifiers online um, and now de debating on how online is going to be with the next game or if somebody comes up with a new net code. I think the future of esports will eventually be online regardless of this uh, of the pandemic that's currently going on. Um, because we I mean, we found a way it's been two years and everything. Uh, we've connected on all across social platforms, and video games is one of them. I, I think eventually we're going to move to a complete uh, online platform. How long? I That's another question. Mm, I don't know about that. We'd have to be able to bypass the laws of physics in order for anybody to take fighting games online seriously. Um, but... Maybe that's just for, uh, you know, old ass people like me who are super discerning and discriminating in that sort of thing. Oh, Chad is like bitching that we didn't talk about who won. Oh, it's because I didn't care. But <laughs> just so you guys know, Ninja Killer got first place. Jukes got second place for North America. Surprise. And I'm not saying I don't care about their like their uh, accomplishment. I mean, Ninja Killer is he's Ninja Killer. He can kick your ass. He probably kick my ass. But I'm just like, it's an online tournament, dude. I don't fucking care who wins an online tournament. I'm just talking about it because it is kind of a talking point within the community right now. But again, I've been very consistent in my saying that online results just don't fucking matter to me. Yeah, and do I want it to become a complete online thing? No, because, I mean, those conventions and everything, very fun to go to. I mean, there's a whole social interaction. I mean, beside, outside of the fact, you know, you're playing a game offline to its full potential. I just, uh, I just have a feeling it's just going to move in that direction. Um, what does Lisa think? Um, what was the topic again? <laughs> <laughs> Damn man, we gotta be professional, man. I gotta I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> detox. <laughs> I gotta detox. No, you know what the thing though is going all digital I think will be the fucking death of this shit. It really would. Half of the fun of these games is the social aspect and taking that away, like nobody really cared about like a lot of esports until they started having like viewer like like live events right like esports wasn't shit until you know starcraft was filling arenas and then it's like oh shit that's fun yeah like going to a star i've never been to a starcraft event i couldn't give two fucks about starcraft but i get by guarantee you if i went to a starcraft event it'd probably be fun even though i don't know shit about starcraft they got cheerleaders fucking fireworks all kinds of shit and that shit is fun. And if esports goes like completely online, like we just have shit like offline or online Evo, that's gonna be the death. That's gonna be the death of uh of of fucking fighting games, as I know it, as I enjoy it. I love hearing stories about people playing offline. You know, even uh, people talk about the arcades. You know, slapping quarters. A buddy of mine say uh, or would tell me that people would slap quarters on the arcade machine saying I got next. And that to me, that environment seems really cool. I didn't get to see that time. I also love hearing stories about people getting together and I'm sure people did this for PlayStation two and stuff. They'd have land parties and just, you know, have tournaments, uh, mortal Kombat. you know, that, that seems really exciting to me. It wasn't a big event. It wasn't anything like that. You just get the chips and dip the land cables. Get Dude, that's literally offline. That's literally how evolution started. 
Like, it was a bunch of people grabbing a bunch of consoles and renting out a hotel ballroom. And then that was it. We're going to have a tournament. Hey, can somebody front the cash to fly this Japanese dude out? I heard he's really good. And that was literally it. That was it. And I feel like losing that, man. Losing that, if, like, if esports and competition, I mean, it's going to be online. That's the future. But if it goes really, really entirely online to where, like, the way Evo was this weekend, this year, um, you know, due to the circumstances. But if that's, like, the way it's going to go, like, that would just kind of kill this genre for me. Because, like, I don't really care to just have only online events. Like, I want to go to offlines, man. The stream, to me, my whole stream is like, yo, man, this is to advertise people coming to chill with me at offline events, right? Like, y'all come hang out in person. This should be great. And maybe there is enough people that really don't want it to go that way. And, uh, you know, even when it does hit that peak where we do get to the online, if we do, um, it very well could retract. You know, people might actually want the social interaction. It might very well change after um, change after the change. Yeah, and I'm hoping I'm hoping that that ends up being the case. Colt, you were going to say something? Oh, I was going to ask Isa how he feels about that one. Oh, I thought that was him trying to talk. This stoned-ass motherfucker. Get the fuck out of my podcast. Motherfuck. This motherfucker high as fuck. <laughs> Anyways, no, you know what? Back on topic, right? Back on topic. I want to discuss... Uh, further into the future of esports and you know something that we kind of do here at team trash is like fucking joke and meme that we're an esports organization but technically we are playing an electronic sport and we are somewhat organized so i'm not lying and making shit up when i say that but i believe honestly looking at the growth of what we're doing with team trash and and all of that i think that this is the future of esports i think it's going to move away from like what it is now like overwatch league and 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 things like that and be more like centralized like the way we have it how it's like the same players in this league competing and people kind of watching that whole ordeal instead of just a bunch of separate events that are not connected I think that's going to be the future is the first person that can really take that whole league episodic fucking television show aspect and add production values that I can't afford is going to kill it. And I feel like a lot of them, they're not doing it because they don't really have a lot of the sincerity. You know, Overwatch League, they've got the production values, but they don't, like, it, it feels like human resources, like, made that event. You know what I mean? So when you say, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, um, you say it's like human resources, like the, um, if you're saying it's got the production value, it's got that whole aesthetic. Are you saying that how they do it? Like, what do you mean by? There's no soul, man. Um, I can't talk about titty fucking because then we'll get in trouble. But whereas like, I don't know. I just feel like everything is moving to this bland boring corporate sterile direction and i'm just like dude what fucking has any teeth anymore man i grew up with fucking ecw wrestling where people were wrapping each other in barbed wire and beating each other with chairs in front of strippers like i like awesome shit like that and i feel like everybody the whole fucking world is moving in this like sterile corporate direction and i i feel honestly that the future of of online media but esports in particular is somebody that goes in the more counterculture direction you're which is what i'm doing no flavor you're saying there's no flavor no i'm saying to, what, that to what's the, going on here i'm saying that i'm the flavor saver or we we are the flavor mm. saver well not cult he yeah we're not shit. god bless him cult he still hasn't said shit. But I mean, like, if you look at all these productions, man, they're all so, like, like, they just seem like a fucking commercial rather than a show. And I feel like there aren't very many shows in esports. Like, there's a little bit, but 
there's no like the personalities like dude you pull up any esport and like go and pull up dota 2 and it's like you pull up any professional team and it's like eight korean dudes that all have the same bowl haircut and glasses and you're like fuck man i bet you one of those guys has some fucking personality if you just let him that would make this shit a lot more easier to watch in my opinion absolutely i mean it's all part of the show I mean, you got your presentation, you got your people. I mean, those commentators, as a commentator, I mean, it seems like, well, not seems like, you are the host. You know, you're part of the show. You're part of telling what's the action, how it's going, how you're feeling, and how, you know, exciting this energy is, this high-velocity sport. Well, the key to a good commentator, and I learned this through wrestling, right, from professional wrestling when i trained in it but the key to good commentary is what they call putting the talent over right a lot of commentators that commentate esports and specifically mortal Kombat, like you go to a lot of streams and you see a lot of events and people are commentating and they kind of are putting themselves over they're showing off and flossing their knowledge or they're you know they're just kind of hyping themselves the commentator up whereas when i'm doing commentary i try not to talk about me at all i try not even to mention my opinions or my thoughts i'll make a read here and there but for the most part i'm trying to hype up and put over the talent right i'm trying to make it to where it doesn't matter who is playing those two guys fighting right now are the two best in the world and this is the world championships and this is exciting and you don't see that from a lot of like esports commentary you don't really see that like even in like bigger you know bigger productions like overwatch league or dota 2 championships and things like that you don't really see them trying to put the players over. You see them trying to just explain the game. And nobody really wants that. Like, a lot of people think commentary is about explaining the game, but it's really not. Like, you'd, I don't explain the game at all. I put over the talent. I put over the players. If I have to explain the game to explain to you why what they did was so fucking tight, then I will. But other than that, for the most part, it's just like calling what happened on screen really fucking cool and that's how you that's how you commentate you just every couple of seconds yeah. that was fucking dope oh here it is look at this oh he did a spin oh there's a big punish ah, that was really cool you know what i mean like that's that's all it is and you don't see that and i'm like why why are people the show whatever esports production you have your return viewers are only going to come back if they care and if you don't make them care, then, like, what the fuck are you even doing? And that's one of the reasons why we have so many return viewers with our league is because I go out of my way to, like, fucking overhype you motherfuckers and be like, yo, this guy is really good, and here's his story. He's, uh, he gets his ass kicked by, you know, Holy Dragon, and he's mad for, you know, the past month. And now you have a story. Now you have an underdog tale. You have a relatability. You have a reason for you want this guy to win. You want that guy to lose you don't really see that and when you do it doesn't have any personality it's like corporate shit it's like yes this is jiminy neutron is he plays out of afghanistan and he sponsored by razor brand headphones and it's like what is this shit man what is this shit yeah there's no real introduction there i mean it's an introduction but it's it's not an introduction yeah, it's well, it's not so much that it's just like, where's where's the personality? Where is the flavor? Yeah. Where is the hype? Like, why aren't where's people? Yeah, why aren't people getting rowdy and crazy? Like, I know Tasty. I've met Tasty Steve in person many, many times. And yes, he is that fucking wild and crazy in person. That's not an act. <laughs> He's like, he is actually that fucking hilarious. Um, And like. People love like when Tasty Steve and Sajam commentate because, you know, Sajam, the straight man, which Sajam is actually pretty funny, too. Like if you meet him in person, from what I hear, I've never met Sajam, but I hear he's pretty funny as well. But you have Tasty Steve who's like, you know, he's a goofball idiot telling all kinds mm -hmm. of jokes and getting crazy. And like that kind of personality, that's what's missing. That Tasty <laughs> Steve, the reason why he's so damn in demand is because he's one of the few people that does what he does, especially because Eris doesn't really co commentate fighting games that much anymore. And you're saying he's just a natural, a natural hype. Like he, his energy is just over the top. Would you say it's natural? You've never seen Tasty Steve commentate a tournament? That's your homework. 
<laughs> You're not uh, FGC deal. if you haven't fucking lost your shit to a Tasty Steve hype moment. Just go. You could probably fucking YouTube that shit. Tasty Steve hype moment. Let me see. Let me see what comes up. Tasty Steve hype moments on YouTube. And look, there we go. First one, good ass Tekken. <laughs> Like, that's what the commentary, that's what esports needs. They need to dress up the production and make it stop looking like Monday Night Football and make it look more like Monday Night Raw. I noticed that. Like, they all have the slick, glossy production values, and people kind of have been critical about my production values, especially since we've been growing a lot lately. And I'm like, no, dude, the whole aesthetic is DIY. Like, if I, like, got really good art design and animations and shit, that would kill what we're doing. You know, if I had fucking, it's Justin Romeo in fucking lightning bolts and shit every time he comes on screen and shit. Like, yeah, that would be cool, but that would take away from our fucking, I guess, our punk rock aesthetic here at the Trash Talk Temple. I mean, we call ourselves the Trash Talk fucking Temple, Doug. <laughs> Nothing we do is slick. Production value is as such. Right. Right. I wish more places yeah. would have that kind of personality. I think it's like me and like Destroyer, Aquaman, like all of us kind of smaller. And again, I'm saying Destroyer and Aquaman are smaller relative. Like they're certainly huger channels than me, but they are smaller relative to like, you know, the Starcraft League or whatever. Right. But like that's where you're finding the actual personality, you know, like us kind of like streamers bringing our personality to our productions and our tournaments. You know, Aquaman has the whole underwater Atlantis theme. Destroyer is usually drunk and yelling. Like, the, these are characters, and that's what I'm kind of getting at, that that's the future of esports, is it's less Overwatch League and more Destroyer being drunk and cursing a lot. That's the future, guys. Watch. Do you think it might be... Uh... A happy medium between i mean because if the community moves toward that because i definitely don't disagree with that i definitely because this is a fun community those communities i'm sure are very fun as well i mean i enjoy their commentary as well um when it does become online will we see a happy medium between that and the online tournaments like do you think I guess the outer picture I'm trying to get at is, do you think someone like Evo will eventually see that? Because I also believe those kind of these kind of communities will grow. Do you think they'll see that and maybe transform more into that? Do you think they'll let loose a lot or a well, lot less? The last time because the of big, these communities. The last time I remember, or the most recent time that I remember of a big corporate entity trying to copy the underground and cash in was when WWE put out NXT to compete with Ring of Honor. And for a while it was doing all right, but then we got a big budget Ring of Honor with AEW and they just folded. And that's what I kind of think would happen with Evo. If Evo isn't careful, right, like Evo is going to lose market share. They're going to lose ground to the the Evo I guess the Evo competitor that has a little bit more bite to them. Like right now, Mortal Kombat doesn't really, or the NRS community doesn't really consider Evo to be the world championships. For the most part, the NRS community considers Combo Breaker. I mean, it's in Chicago. It has the full support of NetherRealm. Those guys, like the guys who run Combo Breaker are huge Mortal Kombat nerds. Like they fucking live for this shit. So the community considers Combo Breaker to be our world championships as far as netherrealm games go and evo kind of has struggled right mortal kombat and netherrealm games are usually very low turnouts for evolution and yet they're the main game at combo breaker and that's that's kind of where i'm going is that it's going to splinter i think we're going to see less things about evo i think evo is going to become more focused on being a very specific thing rather than the catch-all tournament and then each community is going to have their major that they kind of coalesce at as their world championships and I, that's where it's going to go in the future is it's going to splinter off there's going to be less of an fgc but we're going to have more of like an nrs scene and a capcom scene and and it gets as it niches down even more precisely so you're saying it's it's definitely going to narrow down between only a few 
uh, companies and where they reside. Like, for example, uh, the NRS and Combo Breaker. Yeah, for the most part, like a little bit, you know, I just think that the, the communities are just going to get more niched. They're going to get more smaller and more focused. And the businesses that support those communities are going to kind of match that, right? So as the community, as the nether realm community goes deeper and deeper into combo breaker combo breaker is going to see that the majority of their money comes from the nether realm community going to put more and more focus into that until eventually like the only mortal combat tournament would be combo breaker and combo breaker would only do a mortal combat tournament and i see that splintering you know, that splintering is what we have to do to kind of preserve our heritage in fighting games. Because as these communities grow, it's going to get to the point where Evo can't have an offline tournament featuring 12 games with like 8,000 member brackets and still be open yeah. format. So in order to keep the open format, they'll do something, like I said, like if Combo Breaker was a three-day Mortal Kombat tournament alone, then everybody would join and everybody could join and then it would be the, uh, you know, open open entry world championship highly respected event that you know it wants to be i think that's where that's going to kind of go i don't think that mortal Kombat being a part of evo or being a part of any other big esports uh organization going forward is it's not going to matter it's not going to matter if mk11 is at evo i don't think that it would matter if mk11 is at evo next year the whole thing is like you know, I'm a very staunch capitalist, and I believe that the, the market's going to go where the market wants to go. And if no other events are running Mortal Kombat 11 events, but the Mortal Kombat 11 community is still growing, which we talked about at the last mm -hmm. podcast, that Mortal Kombat 11 will grow in perpetuity. As long as people have access to the game, there will be people playing the game, wanting to watch the game, being interested in the game. So the community will continue to grow forever. <laughs> Somebody thought that was funny. And that and that will go all the way to back to Combo Breaker. Well, well that's I'm where saying, the main event. I see what you're saying. That's that's where the main event not will so be much, for that community. Not so much Combo Breaker specifically, but that someone is going to step up and be the place for, you know, a specific game. And as these as these niches and as these communities get more narrower the people that step up are the ones that are going to profit. So like the person, the company that's in the best position for the growth in the future moving forward for NetherRealm games is Combo Breaker because they already have that established rapport with the community. They're already considered the premier event. So anybody go joining you know, into Mortal Kombat in the future, not just MK11, but NetherRealm games specifically, they're going to be looking for combo breaker and seeing the prestige of combo breaker as the world championships i see what you're saying eventually when it gets down to a certain number only a certain amount of places will end up hosting it and will ultimately profit because the community because the community is narrow yeah yeah, yeah it's gonna I be gotcha. a little smaller everything's gonna be a little more tighter a little more focused and i think that the future of esports lies in the hands of those that are willing to niche down very, very narrowly. To just be as, like, as very fucking a thin slice on the pie chart as possible. You know, a lot of people, they ask me, they're like, well, are you going to do any more content for other fighting games? Or, you know, now that MK11 is dead, are you going to do something else? And I'm like, no, fuck that, dude. I'm doubling down. I'm doubling down on MK11. I've do I haven't streamed anything but MK11 in weeks, and like I'm gonna go and probably stream even more and more MK11. And yes, I've been losing like average viewers on my YouTube and average viewers on Twitch, but I believe that that will come around because again, people are going to be cyclical with this game, but this game isn't going anywhere until they cut off the servers and I can't buy it anymore. And I am going to position myself for that future growth of all the people that will eventually come into this game because that number is infinite. The number of people watching Twitch right now is a limited number, and the amount of people that could potentially see my stream and my content now is a very limited number. It's limited by the amount of people in the world and the amount of people interested in Mortal Kombat and the amount of people interested in competitive Mortal Kombat esports. But the amount of people who would be interested in all of that 
that will exist through all of time for the future in infinity, that number is endless. And so that's what I base my content on. I don't base my content on how can I get growth today. I base my content and, and my community based on how can I serve the people that haven't even been born yet with this video? Because this video is not the internet's forever. So somebody who's never even been born is going to watch my fucking Jack's guide. Yeah, you're not you're not giving out a fish. You're teaching everybody to fish for the future. Well, no, not about that. I'm saying my whole business model, my whole profitability plan, everything that I have done with, you know, Team Trash and the Trash Talk Temple, all of that is built for infinite future growth rather than trying to make money now. And I feel like that because the one thing they cannot monetize, the one thing they cannot quantitate, you know, the one thing they can't put a metric or an analytic to and put a dollar price on is personality and creativity. Look, somebody joined again or somebody left? Oh, Who we joined? got J-Row. Oh, it's J-Row. J-Row, say hi to the people. Hi. Um, yeah, I think I introduced myself already, right? Yep, you're good. Anyways, what I was saying is they cannot put a price on creativity and personality. Those are the things that you know who sets the price on creativity and personality? Me. I set the price. I set the price for my creativity and my personality. And that's that's the future. That's the key. That's the one takeaway I want people to like look at is that listen, not selling out and not doing all of that it's going to be tough, man. It's tough in the beginning, but over the long haul, you'll never lose. You'll never lose. You'll only gain. The ones that sell out in the short term, they're going to lose a lot in the future. I feel like in losing out on infinity is like the worst. Yeah, people are going to be like, who's streaming Mortal Kombat? You're streaming Mortal Kombat. Well, not just that, but in, in anything, man, niche down. People keep yeah. trying to chase that yeah. mainstream. And I'm I'm telling you, I'm doubling down. I'm doubling down on MK11 specifically. But I mean, you know, I'm going to go as long as I can. But I think I think that the future of esports is niching down even more narrowly. And that's how you're going to grow. And that's how you're going to make the big success in esports as a content creator and as like an event organizer. All right, what's the topic? God damn it. The topic is J-Ro's fucking tardy ass. Hey, J-Ro, what do you think is the future <laughs> of fucking evolution? Evolution? It's probably going to be online. They already said the next one is offline. Oh, okay, never mind. It's <laughs> offline. <laughs> J-Ro, what do you think is the future of esports? Esports? Uh, I don't pay attention to that. I don't know. Okay, and and what do you what what is your opinion on on competitive games and all of that? I mean, I think it's cool. That's it. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. How are you doing today? Good. I just finished eating. Did you watch Evo? No, I didn't. What? I just know that. Uh, who was it that that one? It was oh, like. Oh yeah, I just know uh, who was it. It was Ninja Killer Juice that one, right? I already said it was Ninja Killer, right? I pulled oh. that shit up. I got fucking. I googled that shit, son. Bam! <laughs> uh, he wanted with Liu Kang, Fujin, and Spawn. I didn't even watch that shit, but I know how to navigate the internet. Yeah, I only know those two that were like in high placement in the tournament. But I mean, what do you think about esports, J Row? Because esports is actually gonna be a thing for you. Right. Your generation, like my generation grew up and esports was like a kind of a, like a, a fantasy, you know, like, oh, you're going to play games and make money for a living like that was a fantasy. And now here it is the reality. Your generation, because I'm assuming that you actually are what you say you are. You guys are going to yeah. grow up with that as part of the ec economy. Like that's part of the economic ecosystem. You're going to grow up with esports as a legitimate trade. And when you're an adult. You could just like put that on your fucking tax return and that's not going to be anything weird. That's going to be normal. In fact, it could even become more prestigious as your generation ages up to be as old as fucking people like me. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, sooner or later, you know, you can you can just make a living off of it. Because, you know, not, not everyone that's in esports or anything like that have made a living off of, you know, the money that they get from esports. I mean, is that is that a goal that you're looking at pursuing? Not really, no. Wow, that's actually interesting because usually people your age are always like, yeah, man, I want to be esports. I want to be a YouTuber. And you're like, <laughs> you're actually doing good at it. Like every little kid that's 12 years old that wishes they were good at video games. And you're like actually kind of good at it and like competing and like winning money or at least being given money for competing. And like, you're like, yo, I don't really know about doing this shit for a job. I think I'm going to do something else. Why yeah. is that? I just don't want to, I just don't want to do that for a living. But why? I want to pursue something else, that's why. Ah, okay. He's got goals, ladies and gentlemen. He's got goals and dreams. Goals and dreams that don't involve that, right? But it is kind of interesting, right? Are you, am I the only one that's noticing that that's different? Are you, are, Toad, what do you think? Well, not- noticing what is different. That, like, that usually people young people... Toward... Young people, like, that's like the dream job. Like, when I was growing up, it was like rock star or actor or athlete. And nowadays, it's like esports celebrity or influencer. Yeah, I mean, that's... Honestly, that's a little relevant to what I was uh, uh, thinking. Because what you're saying about you know jobs were like different and now it's like when you're young you want to be esports i just thought it was funny um when people said back you know early 2000s around my kid days when people were saying you're not going to make money off video games and nobody really saw it coming that that's really going to be a future for a lot of people um and i think that really evolved into that being a uh what would you call it a money-making choice right nobody would have thought that anyone would ever be an influencer influencing people with influences that they use uh influentially upon their social media but you know that the thing about it that i find interesting is you know that that kids kind of pursue that now That I find kind of weird and interesting, and I think that that is going to be expanded upon in the future, that more and more kids, as more and more kids grow up with that being a normal thing, more and more kids are going to grow up to want to do that as a normal thing. And that's why I think niching down and being more specific with, uh, you know, like the game you get involved in, I think that's where you're going to find the success. A lot of people that are just like general fucking gamers or general you know whatever i play first person shooters or i play fighting games competition's gonna be way too thick you know people that are bouncing from game to game they're that's gonna be a thing of the past in the future you know you're better off just picking your one game especially if you want to be competitive you pick one game and you go all in on that game actually if we go toward a future like that where everybody is sticking to one game i mean uh, games last longer yeah and that's the other thing man games are going to be lasting so long going forward we're not going to get any of this like marvel versus capcom 2 died when marvel 3 came out shit anymore because again what stopped that was like accessibility to the games like you you couldn't get the old game on the current cost console but in the future like you know you can get all the uh, PS4 games to play on PS5 for the most part. So those games are going to last at least one more console generation. And it'd be stupid for them to not, you know, continue that going forward. So these games are just going to have long, long fucking tails. And I feel like a lot of people, they're not taking that into consideration. If I were you, I wouldn't just jump on the flavor of the month. You know, whatever new hot game comes out, I would I would double down. That's what I'm doing. I see this shit coming. I said, you know what? I'm doubling down on MK. That might even shed some light into because we were talking about Evo, you know, going into the future of esports and stuff. Talking about Evo hosting new games and all that and communities getting narrower and going to the spot where that community is 
and games lasting longer with the games lasting longer in that equation are we going to see more things more events pop up that host said games that last longer will things like evo only be a dime a dozen where they host the new game and that move game moves to a new place where the community can get narrow and go play if that makes sense I mean, that's kind of the, the original idea behind Evo was it was, well, not the original, but the more modern take on Evo is like, this is the showcase of what the community is like into. And then afterwards, it's up to the community to keep the ball rolling. Like, we're going to give you your showcase and then hopefully you can pick up some numbers from your Evo exposure. Um, and yeah, I could see that happening where Evo becomes less of the world championships and more of like the showcase of what's new and hot in fighting games. And then after it has a game has its Evo run, will splinter off and just be, you know, their own community's fucking tournament. Yeah, I'm just I'm just wondering if. Um, gosh, I'm just wondering if fighting games get different uh, and i'm trying to think how to kind of help you guys picture this if fighting games get to the point where they become more of an indie game like what if fighting games end up dying i don't know how extreme of an idea that is but what if they end up dying and uh, in the move they, they to die. Dead, well, right? on the move to big esports, I mean, anything that's dead is dead. But like, what happens to fighting games and like places like Evo and people who do build these small communities? Then will there will be less of a strive to keep those communities alive, or do you think there will still be communities? There'll still be community for sure, but just not as much as there used to be. I disagree. I think there will be communities, and they'll be bigger than they've ever been. Really. Like, if you look at, like, time on a scale going forward, like, unless something really, really, truly dies, which it seems like there has to be some kind of big controversy to kill something. Like, I, don't, I couldn't see MK11 dying unless there was some, like, really easily exploitable game-breaking glitch that just ruins the fucking game. Like, I've seen fighting game players play through a whole lot less. Even if the new hotness comes out, I still think... Again, people are going to be because it's going to be cyclical. You're going to go in and out. You're going to be into MK11 and then you'll stop for a while and then you'll come back. And right. And as people are going in and out throughout time and there's more and more people coming in and out and more and more people coming in and out to where people that leave MK11 and the scene and the community are going to be replaced by more newer people coming in, and it's just going to kind of go on and on forever. The only way it dies is if there are less new people coming in than people going out, and I just don't see that happening for a long, long time, if ever. So the fighting game genre as a whole will probably take a, a very significant amount of time to even get to that point. Well, what I, you're saying. think about it this way. Like, boxing as a skill is obsolete. Boxing as a entertainment venue, right, as an event that you watch or go to, is been replaced and found obsolete by fans of MMA. But yet, boxing is still here. And... Yeah. Like, boxing is actually growing because people want to see, what is his name, Logan Paul get beat up by, I don't know, fucking Ice Cube or whoever the fuck rapper he's trying to fight. I... You know, like, so, but that's what I'm saying is that, like, boxing is obsolete. Like, you don't need to learn how to box to survive in, in life anymore. In fact, if you run around trying to box people and you box the guy with the gun, you will box nobody anymore. So boxing as a life skill is kind of obsolete. <laughs> But boxing as a sport, most of the people that would have been into boxing nowadays are really into, like, MMA. Because it's like, why watch people just punch each other when I can watch them punch and kick and do all of that stuff? But yet, boxing still has its fans, and it's getting more and more new fans every day. Even though we make fun of Logan Paul, how many, like, eight-year-olds that love that guy are now interested in boxing just because he took it on as, like, some weird niche hobby? Because he's rich and doesn't have fuck else to do. And that's that's where fucking esports is going to go, man. Like, 
that's where esports will be is that you're going to have fucking your mainstream fucking evo shit which is the mma that's why all the people that like fighting games are going to be watching that but the niche the niche of like mortal kombat 11 is going to grow and it's going to grow because there will be a community sprouting upon around the passion hype and excitement of individual personalities boxing is growing because people like logan paul and he really likes boxing that's the sad reality but it doesn't make it any less true. So it just sounds like that there there is a legacy here. Like the main point. No, it of means these I want to be is, Logan Paul. Is, he, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the I guess I guess on an, on a side note here, it just sounds like the communities will always have a legacy to keep it going. It's it truly never dies. It's not so much that, well, I don't know that it would be a legacy that goes forward. I think it's more of like, there's new people being born every day and nothing leaves the internet. So every day somebody new is born that could become potentially interested in Mortal Kombat or boxing forever, forever, forever. Like this is kind of mind boggling to think about, but forever. Until there is no more internet and no more YouTube. And even then, someone could take all of my videos after I've been dead for a thousand years and host them on another fucking channel if YouTube ever does go out. of. So, like, even then, even then, it still may be forever. Forever, there will be new people getting into Mortal Kombat. That number will grow forever, infinitely, until there are no more people. That's what I'm saying. Is like, it doesn't matter if the numbers are small now. You're looking at now versus the future. And the future is far bigger than the present. And people are losing sight of that. People are really losing sight of like, yo, dude, forever is a mighty, mighty long time. But I'm here to tell you, there's something else. So I've got uh, somewhat of an interesting question for you guys. Um, And just a little backstory to kind of go into what I'm talking about when I say how long or when I ask how long will it take for Mortal Kombat to become one of the indie games, right? And what I mean that, you know, it's a big thing now. It's owned by, you know, its original creators and stuff. How long will it take until the original creators still have the properties, but it's owned by someone else and what i mean owned i mean can be made any way they want by anyone else well that would for it to become one of those one of those games that you only scroll in the miscellaneous games in the xbox series z in the future you go oh hey mortal Kombat," but it's in the indie game section what well how long will it take first of all i don't like the term indie game and i generally just ignore anything that has indie in its subgenre or title because i feel like indie is such a nebulous descriptor it's stupid what is indie well we're independent independent from whom well we have a small budget okay but what about the ones that make a huge budget and then like now they're like indie is basically a way for tryhards to be fucking pretentious you know it's the nerds that were like oh yeah you listen to this music but that shit's mainstream and lame You should listen to this music that's cool because all of my friends in college listen to it. I hate that term and I hate that distinction. Like, at what point is a game no longer considered indie? You know what I mean? Like, you look at, like, the guys that made that game Limbo, right? That's, like, a big indie game. And now their next game after Limbo is a big fucking deal, has a bigger budget, gets published. Now they're no longer independent, even though it's literally the same people just fucking making a better product. They learn new stuff. They have newer technology. They got a better staff. Like, it, to me, like, having this indie distinction is shooting for mediocrity. We are indie. You're just trying to be small time forever. Like, that's all you're trying to do. Because I judge a game based on the merits of the quality of the product put forth by me, in front of me. If you're talking about low budget, I mean, like, what, what was it? EA put out that uh, what was the, uh, wrap together or tied together, that little yarn game that was like a low-budget game, and it looked like an indie game, but it was put out by fucking Electronic Arts. It's not indie in any way, shape, or form. So, like, yeah, man, I think indie oh, is I'll a stupid m- distinction. I'll go ahead and move away from that term because if we are <laughs> talking about it in that, I definitely, definitely wouldn't go with that word choice. Um, but yeah, it just gets to that, 
you know that that point where it's a lower budget game yeah well okay so the game moving over to like being a smaller more low budget game um i think it would be a very very long time if ever not even possible like i can't see i can't see it turning into that i can't see it becoming that small it will just forever have a a good budget for what it is. No, Mortal Kombat now has, what, three Hollywood big-budget production movies made off of it? That's like asking if I think Star Wars will ever become small-time. It's like, eh, like, people fucking hate Star Wars now. Like, they didn't like Last Jedi, and they haven't watched anything since. But that doesn't mean that Star Wars is small-time. It's a fair comparison. I, I feel like that's very fair thing but yeah i mean mortal Kombat is definitely here to stay especially um with our in our community you know and communities like it um esports as a whole though yeah it's i feel like it's just moving online ultimately ultimately right well it looks like we are at about an hour and a half into the podcast uh we could kind of wrap it up any closing thoughts for you guys that are still in here no Awesome. Uh, I think uh, I think we pretty much got it. All right. Any shout outs for you guys on social media? Where can we follow you guys at? You can follow me on Twitch. Uh, you can follow me on Twitch. Uh, I stream it almost every day. And my Twitch is uh, Justin122408. Cheesy. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And- and you can follow me on twitch.tv slash SoCalHoneyBadger and uh, on YouTube and Twitter as well. Just look for SoCalHoneyBadger. It's really only me that wants that name. Uh, but, yeah, with that, thank you guys for stopping by for the podcast. And hopefully I'll see you all next Sunday. See you next Sunday. Thank you.